Hi, I'm Michelle Tuhill and I'm coming to you from Canara Community House and Eastern Newsbeat and I'm here today to have a chat to renowned Celtic harpist Kath Connolly. Welcome Kath. Thank you very much. Oh, Kath, first of all I'd like to start by asking you about your connections to Canara Community House. You've um, uh, had a connection for quite some time. I have. I actually used to be the activity coordinator at the nursing home just around the corner, Edward Street Nursing Home, and so I used to bring residents down here Oh, many, many years ago. I used to wheel them down in wheelchairs and we'd be part of the sing-along concert once a month, and then eventually I ended up as one of the tutors here, tutoring in lifestyle and leisure, how you become an activity coordinator in a nursing home, and then eventually I was on committee, and, and so I've had a, oh, I've been connected to this place for 20 years. You play the Celtic harp, and that's a fairly unusual instrument. How did you first start? What led you to to begin learning to play the harp? I've been playing for about 17 years and I actually didn't expect to ever play the harp. What actually happened was about 17 years ago at Christmas time, I had really put a lot of pressure on to become to get a whippersnipper. And so Christmas turns up and there's a great big bundle under the Christmas tree and I think, beauty, I've got my whippersnipper. So I go down and I pull back the blanket and there's no whippersnipper in sight. But what I do find is various bits of timber, various bits of nylon thread because I'd been given all the makings of a kit harp and not a whippersnipper. So I put the kit together and I got a book called Teach Yourself to Play the Folk Harp and I started on page one and I worked and worked and worked and after several months I got to page two and I worked and worked and eventually got to the end and it says congratulations you're a harpist. I thought beauty I must be a harpist so I became a harpist. That's so incredible. What I had to do with the harp was learn the bass clef and the hardest thing about that was getting the two hands coordinated to play in opposite directions and that was like my brain can't do this, my brain can't do it but it did. Yeah. Now you've released a number of CD recordings and your latest one is called Journey Celtic Harp Reflections. Um, what inspired you to, um, to compose this CD? Yes, I, I've, three of my albums are with Greg Hunt. Now Greg is both a beautiful, beautiful man and a beautiful musician and he plays oh, everything. He plays violin, mandolin, every stringed instrument you could think of except harp. And so we've got three albums, but, but um, there was always this sense in me of wanting to produce an album that was just gentle, reflective, taking people on a, on a journey, just, just not trying to be a show-off album, just, you know, come with me and, and get into that, that deeper place within you. So, so very much inspired by that sense of come to a calm place, sit quietly within the music, let the music hold you. So, so I'm very much hoping the intention of this album is that it holds people in that, that, that safe, that, that deeper place. What's different about this CD in comparison with the other CDs that you've composed? I, I guess, well, as soon as you're, I'm solo and away from Greg, the, 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 the pressure, but also I guess the, um, the, there's a different combination of inspiration happening. It, it's having to find it all within myself, whereas bounce off a lot from Greg's wonderful musicianship and also his energy. I had to go somewhere different with this. I had to find a different place within myself. So, so why is it different? Maybe, maybe in some ways it's not so technically clever, but um, it comes from a, a solo place, an inner place, that um, rather than the outer place where Greg and I perform from. Yeah. Do you have a favourite piece of your own music, or and a favourite piece of of other people's music? Look. Uh, a few years ago I composed a piece of music called Veriditas and I, Veriditas is, is a word that comes from Hildegard of Bingen, an 11th century German nun of course, <laughs> and it actually means the great creative energy of the, of the world. And something about that piece, I don't know, when, it, when I play it it just goes to that deep place within me. But, but it's been quite extraordinary the impact that that piece has had on other people. I, I get emails from, from all over the world with people saying, I played that when my, my mother died, I played that when I got married, I played that when my baby was born. There's something about that piece of music that, that um, I don't know, maybe it's a, somehow an archetypal piece, you know, it just happens to be that I'm the one that plucks the strings for it. But as far as other people's music, uh, I've got to go for Turlock or Carolyn, the, the um, wonderful, wonderful Celtic harper born in 1670 and his music continues to inspire me from the first tune he wrote to his farewell to music. Yeah, totally inspired by the work of Turlock O'Carolyn. And uh, haven't you won an award under his name? <laughs> You've done your research. I have indeed, yeah. Uh, uh, 
a few years now I got the opportunity to, to, perform, to, to compete over in Ireland into the um, Turlocker Carolyn competition and, and um, yeah, that was a, a great honour to be on stage and, and doing that and they were very generous and, and gave me a bit of a prize so that was nice. Yeah. Um, one of your many talents is teaching Celtic harp. What, who are the sort of people that come to, to have harp lessons? Yeah, great question, Michelle. It's um, I only teach women, except for one exception. But I only teach women because, but mainly they're they're adult women who've come to this point in their life where they say, finally, I can do something for myself. And do you know how many women they come in for their first lesson? And they sit down, they touch the harp and they burst into tears. It's not an uncommon thing because there's this sense with this instrument is something I've wanted to play since a young child. And finally, I have this chance to do it. It's, it's this, again, this sense of journey. This, this, I have come to this point where I'm finally saying yes to the permission to give myself this chance to play this instrument. So, Are they usually people that have come with prime experience? No, people come with, with zero experience or year eight music on the piano and, I, and, and um, in many ways I'm, I'm more comfortable with the, the absolute beginning where I can say this is your hand and this is your thumb and the thumbs go up and the hands go down and I just love, I guess it's like when I was tutoring here at Canara too, this sense of taking people from... from fear and intimidation into the sense of, of owning what they're doing yeah so I can really sense your passion for this instrument and for teaching yeah. I, love, I love the process of teaching you've been playing professional Celtic harp since 1998 what do you think have been some of the highlights of your music career Oh gosh, I've just come back from touring America and that was pretty awesome they, they invited me to um, perform at a big conference over there, the Spiritual Directors International Conference, and, and so to be invited to do that, and I thought, well, while I'm there, why don't I organise a few other concerts? So I kept having this sense of, this is me, I'm on this stage, I'm at this place. It was, it was, that was certainly wonderful. But, you know, I also love doing little house concerts, and I love, I've got a whole background of therapeutic music and just playing for someone as this in, in the last process of life. What is the highlight? How can you compare you know a stage in Boston to sitting beside someone dying they are both absolutely stunning experiences yeah and have their own significance obviously absolutely, absolutely. Um, what's next on the agenda for you Kath I also run a lot of retreats and quiet days for, for different people and, and constantly the music and, and the whole spirituality go together What's next? It seems that I'm moving more into more into this spirituality and harp, the combination of the two. Um, yeah, there's certainly a lot of opportunities. The next couple of years are looking pretty full on with the music and the spirituality. So what's next? I don't know. Watch this space. Watch this space. You certainly will. Um, do you have a web address for people that might be interested in purchasing your oh, CDs? Oh, lovely. Thank you. <laughs> I do. www.cathy.com.au well, it's been an absolute pleasure to meet you, Kath, and um, I'm really looking forward to hear you play. And thank you once again for joining us. Thank you very much.